So this is the second part of the lecture now on finding data. This lecture aimed at economics, finance and MBA students. And in this part of the lecture, what we're going to concentrate on is finding macroeconomic and demographic data. Um, the first database I want to talk about is called Passport. The Passport is unique in that it provides both statistics and written reports and databases usually provide one or the other of those uh, things. And it's also unique in that although it's a statistic, statistics database, it is relatively easy to search. So I would recommend it highly uh, for uh, searching for data. If you can get your data from Passport, then I think you should. Before we see it in action, let's just point out that the maximum data you're going to get from Passport dates back to 1977 at the earliest. And many of the data sets are annual, although there is now some quarterly and monthly data on the database. Let's have a look at how it works. So the links for Passport are on your subject page. And if you're looking at this lecture, you probably know where your subject page is. Uh, but just to reiterate, if you use the My Subject tab on the library homepage and the drop down box to find your subject page, finance and MBA students will be coming to management. And just for a change, we're going to go to the economics page uh, to find Passport. Links to macroeconomic data databases are at the bottom of the economics page. Just clicking on the word passport to open up an information page and then logging on. On passport, I accept terms and conditions and here I am in the database proper. Now, the easiest way to search here is to just do a keyword search in this box on the top right hand corner. Um, but there is another search mechanism which I'm going to show you uh, under the word search. Here you'll find a category tree and this can be very, very effective and useful for searching for information. The category tree is split into two. The top part of it concerns itself with uh, consumer markets and we're not interested in those today. So I'm just going to collapse the top part of it and leave the bottom part, which has got more macroeconomic and demographic data sets. Before I start searching it, let's have a look at the sorts of things we can find here. Under economy and finance, we've got things like exchange rates, foreign direct investment, GDP, inflation, poverty indicators. And if we click a bit further, you'll even find lending rates and money supply, etc. So quite a lot of useful data sets there. Foreign trade brings us to uh, data for exports and imports and for the trade balance. Under energy and environment, you will find things like energy prices. So you can get crude oil spot prices and natural gas prices. And under the environmental data, you will get CO2 emissions data for a country of your choice as well. Down towards the bottom of the list, we go, we move into demographics. So the population section has got births, deaths, um, estimates of population on the 1st of January every year, and even migration statistics. And just above that, you will find labor and education. And under labor, you've got hours worked um, per week, um, costs, of labor, so wages, wage rates, uh, maternity legislation, how many weeks a year, uh, how many weeks uh, a woman can have off to have a, a child, um, unemployment rates, uh, data for the economically active population, and so on and so forth. Under literacy and education, we have literacy levels, duration of education, and um, statistics about each section, each level of um, education. So um, how many primary school pupils there are in a particular country, even how many teachers there are in a particular education sector. So there's a wealth of information on this database and it's well worth having a good look on it to find information for your uh, assignments. 
If you're new to the database though, you may not know where the data set you want sits on this category tree and you can therefore filter the category tree um, and find more readily uh, the data set that you're looking for. So let's have a look for uh, the total GDP of Greece. I'm just typing in total GDP into this uh, top line here and I'm going to filter the tree. Most of the tree has now disappeared and it only leaves the parts of the tree where the words total GDP appear. And th this is the data set that I want to see here. I want this, therefore, to become my category. I, s I simply tick the box next to the words total GDP to make it my category. And now I could um, use the filter to find some more uh, data sets if I wished and fill this category box up. But I'm just sticking to the one data set just to make things simple today. So after I've picked my categories, I then pick my countries. So I'm clicking this large box at the bottom, which says now choose geographies. And remember, I'm going to look for Greece. So I want Greece in this geography box here. Greece is um, in this geography tree. It's under Western Europe, which is not necessarily accurate, but uh, as far as passport goes, Greece is in Western Europe. So we just click the box next to Greece and Greece becomes our geography. I now can run search or see the data. If I run a search, I will get a set of results uh, with data at the top and written reports underneath. If I press see data now, I will just see the data set that I've requested. So I'm going to do that for speed. And here you find a result with six years of uh, total GDP for Greece given in millions of euros. You see at the side of this of these data, the letter Q, that means that there is quarterly data available. Were there monthly data available, there would also be an M here, but there isn't any monthly data for this data set. If you want the quarterly data, you just simply click on one of these Qs and that will appear. Today, I'll just leave it on annual for speed. So we've got six years of annual data here, which is not very much. If you want to get more data, over on the left-hand side, you can change what the table shows by changing the time series. The quickest way to do this is just to simply open quick selections and click on the word all. The table will change and now you can see GDP of Greece still in millions of euros from 1977. And if I scroll to the right, you will see that this data goes right up until 2020. So just about here, you see the typeface changes from um, normal typeface to italic typeface because this is real number here and this is a forecast from 2013 onwards. If you don't want to see this actual number of uh, millions of euros, if you wanted to see this number per capita, for example, you can make changes at the left hand side. So here you can choose uh, GDP of Greece per capita or per household. You may not even want to see uh, the actual number. You may want to see a year on year growth percentage, which you can do um, again on the left hand side or a growth index even uh, is viewable here. If you didn't want millions of euros, but thousands or billions, you can change um, the unit multiplier. And indeed, you don't have to look at the um, data in the local currency. You do have the option to change to uh, US dollars, pounds, Japanese yen and Swiss francs. So let's just uh, to show you that this works. Let's just change the data set from euros to uh, sterling. And you can see now that we have the GDP of Greece in millions of pounds instead of millions of euros. When you're happy that you've made all the changes and you've got the data that you need, you can download the data into Excel at the top there. So that is Passport. Uh, moving on uh, to our next database then, we'll now discuss the UK Data Service. The UK Data Service has a section on international macro data and uh, these data come from very respected sources 
like, for example, Commission, the International Monetary Fund, the World Bank, the OECD, and the United Nations. Once you've got in to the UK data service, you can get data out of it relatively easily. However, there is an issue with actually getting into the data service. It is quite complicated to log on and you do have to register with the service because the data is only freely available to students at UK universities. So you have to prove that you are a student at a UK university before you can get access to the data. So let's start logging on to the UK data service and let's see if we can get you in and get you finding information. Okay. Um, I'm on the finance and accounting page here, which is part of the management subject page, and the macroeconomic data databases are at the top of this page. And I can see here the UK data services, international macro data, and that's where I'm going to click. This is the UK data service, international macro data section. If you get thrown out of this page which when you're registering you will do a simple way of getting back to this page is to click on get data key data and then navigate back to the international macro data section just having a look at this web page to see what data sets we've got we can see here as i said earlier on a, a european commission data set uh, moving down the page a little bit further, the International Monetary Fund data sets appear, and we're going to see the international financial statistics in a second. The OECD data appears next. Under that, you'll get UN, and then right down at the bottom, the World Bank. And we're also going to see the World Bank development indicators, world development indicators later on. So let's have a look for... Um, let's have a look at the international financial statistics from the IMF. We'll click on the name of the data set and that brings us to an information page. Now in the abstract on this page you get some useful information. For example, you're told that some of the data on this data, database is annual and some is quarterly and monthly. You're told that the annual data starts in 48 and the quarterly and monthly starts in 1957, although balance of payments data don't start until uh, 1970. Um, you've got the main topics that the database covers. That can be quite useful for you to read before you start searching. And you're also told which uh, countries are covered by the, the database, which looks more or less like every country in the world anyway. So, to look at the data, to extract data, we need to explore online. And then we go to the international financial statistics. And then we have to go through a very complicated login process. So I'm just going to do that for you now. I'm going to search for the University of Leicester. That's the first stage. Oh, spell it right. And continue. you will come to this page um, at first, the first time that you do this. And this is the Athens authentication page. Now, it seems quite obvious to log in here, and yet we can't log in here because we don't have an Athens login at the university. So we need to choose the alternative login underneath here. And again, we have to search for the University of Leicester. and we'll find the University of Leicester second down on the list. Then we can go to our own login page. And at the time of recording, we can log in now, but we have to put UOL backwards slash in front of our username. I don't know whether that will change in the future, but just for today, at least, we do have to provide UOL backwards slash to get into this database. And then I just log in. And I have actually got through to the international financial statistics um, from the International Monetary Fund. 
If this is the first time that you've done this logon process, you won't get through. You will be asked to register now with the UK Data Service before you can get to the data sets. Um, this will throw you out of the IMF pages. And remember, you need to go to the UK Data Service, get data, key data, international macro data to get back to where you need to be. Right, off we go through to the international financial statistics. We have certain tables now that we can choose to see. Commodity prices, country tables and world tables. I'm going to look for exports from India. And because I'm concentrating on one country, I'm going to go to the country tables. I'm going to find my country in the alphabetical list. There it is, India. And I'm going to have a look at quarterly data. All of the quarterly data, all of the quarterly macroeconomic data for India has appeared on the screen from the first quarter of 1957 onwards. Now, all I want to see are the exports of India. So I can narrow down all this data by using links at the side here. And I'm going to, first of all, click on the word series. And I'm going to take out all the data. I'm going to unselect all the data and filter to data sets about exports. Here I've got a data set exports in national currency in billions. So I'm going to choose that one and then I'll get the exports from India in billions of rupees. I'm also going to limit my time scale as well. So I'm going to deselect all years. Just scroll down a little way here. And I'm going to select a range of years from the first quarter of 2007 to the second quarter of 2013. Because I selected the select range box, all I needed to do was t tick the first box in the range and the last box in the range and the rest of the boxes got filled in for me. Now, up here, I show table and there I've got the exports of India from the first quarter of 2007 over to well, at the moment, the last quarter of 2012, there are two spaces here. If I hover over these spaces, I'm told that there are no data yet available for these two quarters. So at least I know it's not a malfunction of the database. I know that no data is yet uh, available for uh, those two quarters. And I've got a message in these boxes. And if I hover over the boxes, the letter V means that this data is new or it's changed since the last cycle. So you may have seen a different number in these boxes in previous times that you've searched. Once we're happy with our table, we can download it to Excel. And to download to Excel, we click on the folder and we navigate to Microsoft Excel format and that will allow us to, my, uh, to export these data into Excel. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at the world development indicators. So I need to go back to the UK data service. And remember to navigate to international macro data, I need get data, key data, international macro data. The World Bank is right down at the bottom. There are three data sets and I'm going to choose the world development indicators. The information page gives us a little bit of information about this, these data sets. Um, it tells us that they only run from 1960 onwards uh, to start with. Also, you need to note that World Bank data is only main topics of the database are listed here and the countries are listed underneath. Again, it looks like a significant uh, number of countries from the world are represented by this database. We explore online to get to the data sets. And to be honest, the world development indicators are actually available free of charge. So we don't need to log in to this data set. We can just get straight to it. This is a new interface and it's in its beta release, which suggests to me that this interface may change over time. But at the moment of my recording, this is what you have to do to get information out of the World Bank. We do four clicks in this 
left hand column here data by provider world bank world development indicators world development indicators latest data so that was four clicks on the left hand side there and again you see all the world development indicators have appeared on the screen for every country so we're going to use these links here to change that and what we'll concentrate on here is the consumer price index from China that's what we'll look for so subject I'm going to unselect all the subjects and filter to consumer price that's brought me up consumer price index and a percentage inflation rate I think I might see both of those actually I'm quite happy with both of those so I'll view those now location I don't want the whole world so I'm going to unselect the whole world and I'm going to limit to China whenever you see an I on the World Bank data based on next to a World Bank data point let's say uh, you can click that uh, I and you will get some information about that particular data set this information here will tell you that China is mainland China and the calculations have excluded Hong Kong and Macau because they've got um, their own inputs in in the world development indicators so you know what you're looking at if you click on the I uh, to get more information let's view this data now so we've got inflation and consumer price index for China alone and we've got 2007 onwards and we can change that as well let's have a few more years let's have from 2000 onwards so now I have a table of inflation percentages from 2000 to 2012 well actually to 2011 2012 is not not yet there and I can change that to the consumer price index if I wish uh, when I'm happy with my tables I can download them to Excel here I do one data set first so the consumer price index first and then change my table and download the inflation rate second and that is a look at two databases on the UK data service that leaves me with one more thing to talk about and that is Bloomberg uh, you may well be aware of Bloomberg from your lectures uh, Bloomberg is an amazing database which provides company accounts data that we discussed in the first part of this lecture um, and the economic indicators that we've just been looking at you can get those off Bloomberg as well but it provides much more than that you've got stocks uh, you've got beta values, you've got equity indices, bonds and gilts, exchange rates and other uh, money market uh, data sets, commodity prices and financial and business news and everything is presented in real time and up to date so you can get minute to minute uh, uh, data from uh, Bloomberg. Now just opening up the economics page again so we can have a look at something Bloomberg is not networked down to the bottom of the page there to the macroeconomic data Bloomberg is not networked so I cannot demonstrate it on this uh, lecture um, but what I can show you is the information page for Bloomberg and give you some tips on how to uh, search the database you'll find Bloomberg on 12 PCs in the David Wilson libraries IT room 2 on the ground floor uh, and you can recognize which PCs are Bloomberg PCs by their multicolored uh, keyboards search in Bloomberg is very very simple because it uses predictive text so you simply type in what you're looking for and Bloomberg will suggest to you a number of data sets and you just choose the appropriate one if you get to the page of a data set and you do not understand what you're looking at press the help button on the keyboard once and you will get very useful page specific uh, help with that page you will see do a document of words and annotated pictures which will show you exactly what you're looking at on the page they're extremely useful these um, help uh, pages
If you're stuck with Bloomberg and you don't know how to search it, press the help button twice and you will get a chat mechanism pop up and you can communicate with Bloomberg operatives at night or day. This service is, is uh, provided 24 seven. So you can chat with Bloomberg operatives and they will tell you how to find the data sets you're after. There is here on the information page, a Bloomberg manual a 38 page manual provided by Bloomberg which should introduce you to the database itself and I have written um, a library guide as well um, with 10 simple searches so if you wanted for example to find stock prices on Bloomberg you would follow these instructions here uh, for equity indices you, there is another set of instructions for beta another set and so on there are 10 simple searches uh, that can help you get started with the database uh, there. And that brings us to the end of this part of the lecture.